Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to another edition of Horton Common. It's now time to get the motors on the points and back in the board. Hi everyone and welcome back. As you know I've forgotten to install point machines, point motors, whatever you like to call them, into four sets of my points. And worst of all, the track was laid. However, I'm pleased to say that we've been able to lift the track with no damage. And I was also able to source these three point motor machines. Courtesy of Hidden Treasures at Birchington, they might be slightly older stock, but they are. As you can see, the good old-fashioned Pico PL10 motor switch machines. And I paid £3 each of them. Second-hand price for a new product. I'm not complaining. So, let's crack on. There are indeed many point machines, point motors, available on the market today. Be they the Pico motors, Hornby's. DCC Cobalt and Slow Motion Tortoise Motors. This layout is using Pico PL10s and there are various ways of mounting them and it all depends on individually how you prefer laying them. Now the easy way, they say, but it never works for me, is to gap the points thus and then that hole there, drill, that gives you then dead centre of the points and ideally for mounting your point motor from underneath on an adapter plate using the PL10E which is the extended pin which will then come up through the board and then you snip it off to the height at that level. Now personally I don't get on with mounting point motors underneath via an adapter plate. Um, I'll show you what happens or what they how they recommend that you do it. As I said, you put that piece in, you drill that hole out, and then you cut a slot like thus through the board, and then you can mount them underneath on a plate, a point motor adapter plate. And then you can also add an accessory switch if you're using electrofog points. As I said, however, for me, it just does not work. And I suppose you could call me a dinosaur, an old age pensioner, bone idle or just plain stupid. But for me, what works most is by mounting the motor directly to the point itself, like thus. As you can see, I'm moving closer. The pin is in the center of the tie bar and either side of the point you can see the four lugs which are there holding the motor in place. If I put it down I can show you better. So there's there's a couple of pins there and a couple there which are just folded over and it holds the motor nice and secure. Add your wiring which I'll show you how to do in a minute. And then, the best bit is drilling out a big hole. As in the good old days of Blue Peter, here's one I made earlier. As you can see, we have the hole ready to receive the point motor. This is just crudely done. This is not in its finished state. Because this hole has to be rectangular. And it has to mount the motor perfectly there's the set of points which will be going in this motor is also attached to the points I'll be renewing all this wiring I've been showing you how to do it but what will happen is that this will slot into there and will sit neatly now what I tend to do is if I put the motor sideways like that 
you can just about see there and there if we look down the side you see how it protrudes over the side of the motor I tend to snip those off right against the metal plate and the four tabs which are if you look at the back of the motor you see those four little tabs one either side and two in the middle I bend those over as well so they're flush otherwise you're just going to make the hole bigger and bigger and you don't really want it to take up too much area because it'll end up coming right out over here and then you'll just be gazing down into a hole what I do is by doing that I make the hole a bit smaller the motors a better snug fit and I'm able to insert strips of cork underneath just to act as a support for the ballast on the top without having to look through to daylight so that's the theory I'll show you how it works in a minute and I'll also show you how to wire one of these switch motors up. Also like to add that you're probably thinking, well, what size hole or what size drill did he use to drill that hole out? Well, what I used was one of these, a 14 mil wood drill for drawing, for putting locks in doors and large holes. And I did three of them. So the outside, opposite side, and centre. So it's a case of three holes, 14 mil drilled, and then using the heavy raft made into a rectangle. I hope that serves as a bit of help for you. So here we have our hole, which we need to make rectangular. I'll show you what it's like at the moment. You see what I mean? There's a straight edge which I've just done some filing then and there's another bit which got to make it straight so we come back down press that nicely there and then with a nice big rasp that is how I widen the hole like thus I should note also underneath is a plastic Tupperware dish to catch all the wood and the shavings so it's not going all over the floor and causing a mess and then we will hoover that up and take the pot out once we're all done so there we go so what I've got to do now with this motor is there's the back of the motor you see there's a u shape that's your continuity between the two poles and i'm going to replace that with new wire because this is far too thick and then on the opposite side as you can see we have two more wires which will go to the switch okay so this wire coming off the loop and that will be removed and that will be removed over the side and then I'll be able to show you the new wiring nice and neat and where the motor looks like once I've cut down all these bits and pieces okay so we'll crack on with that so you can see the motor there see what we're up against and we'll see how we get on okay so then if you look you can see if I move it around this way it's better there we are you can see there 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 and there the tabs have been folded over so they don't get in the way you'll also see the ends there and there have been trimmed back if we compare it to another point motor like that and see how those little bits of PCB extend if you turn it out of there you'll see they've been trimmed off now you notice that this point motor has got a very long pin this is a PL10E E standing for extended pin now the reason sometimes you're going to need an extended pin is because you're going to mount it under the board 
and you want that to not only change the points but do a various host of other things such as this is a PL10 on an adapter mounting plate now this goes to the underside of the board your boards on top and then this pin goes up through the board and into the point and then you have to trim the point that sorry not the point trim this uh, bar to the height of the tie bar on the point itself and that will throw your point I don't get on with these hence why I don't do them now underneath you can also mount one of these which is an accessory switch and that sits on the bottom here if I fold all this lot back you can see that there is contact there's three contacts let's bend that one back down either side you've got two there one there and you've got space there to put your tie bar in and that is an actual miniature switch and that is for switch switching polarity on electrofrog points and to do that automatically you simply he says push that on except it does help if you do it the right way around that's better push that on and then that sits underneath so there's quite a bit of things going on there so you've got the accessory switch there the point machine itself and the adapter plate and the extended pin and the idea is when this point changes that you are switching polarity on the frogs via these contacts on the bottom there I say it's just a push fit it's sometimes easier to get on than it is to pull off but there we are there it is there's the little bottom half of the pin your large pin and your accessory switch which is there get all this wiring out of the way you see where the little hole is just push them in wiggle them around a bit and there we are I suggest you put a little bit of double sided tape under that there just to make sure that it sits in place but I said I don't get on with these at all I prefer the nice big holes in the top but that's a PL10 with everything mounted on it and that's a PL10 without anything on it now this one interest interestingly was a normal PL10 one of the short ones like it's fitted on here and it had a short bar you can see here that the top of the bar is just sticking out of the tie bar so I want you to try and make a PL10E extended from a PL10 now I had quite a few of these motors uh, they were given me unfortunately they were water damaged um, I, luckily I tested them before but if you look you can see it's corrosion there and the solder joints don't look that good and there's corrosion there but I knew that the tie bar was okay so this was a normal PL10 that one there so what I did was I undid all these tabs before, lifted off both of the small circuit boards being very careful not to break the wires because each of those dots contains a wire I don't know if you can just see it but there's one of them there there's one there there's one there and there's one there and that's from your solenoids so it's imperative you don't damage that so I managed to get it off and prise it apart slightly and just got the old draw bar out which is there and then swapped it with a PL10E one 
and put it back together. Now this one does work fine. I think that's more luck than judgment. But um, I'm not going to be using an extended pin now. But at least I now I can do it. Next thing I want to do is get rid of this awful wiring on the bottom of this point. So let's get on with it. That's one. It's just very, very thick wire, this. It's excessively thick. That's that one out the way. That's that one out the way. And what I think we'll do is we'll use a solder sucker for that because there seems to be an unusually large amount of solder on there. Yeah, it's got some of it off. Yeah, it's got a lump of it off too. So you don't need that much on there. that one let's put rid of that one excellent get the solder sucker it's like a giant syringe which is heat proof and when you press that button it sucks up the excess solder and spits it out And there's an excessive amount on there. There we are. So that's got that done. So now we have our PL10 sitting there quite happily. And now it's time to start on the rewiring. Okay, so now we have our PL10 point motor. Now we're going to start doing some of the wiring. So you can see the wires which I've got here. Um, quite basic. There's a short length of black, longer black, red and a green wire. We're going to start with the short black. And I shall just flux the ends of those. There we go. Get our solder line. And just a little. Coating of solder on there, so that's done. Then we'll take the next black wire. I'm going to dip that into the flux. A little bit of solder. And there we go. That's that one done. Okay. Put the solder line back in. I'm going to trim the end of the black wire because it's quite long I don't want it that long same with the short black wire you don't need it that long that one I'll leave because that's going to be the connection to one of the baseboard okay right 
So we have the loop wire, which is a short black and the large black, and I'm going to solder those two together. Job done. Could be neater, but hey ho. Solder line back. Bit of flux. Run that through there. Actually looking at those two black wires, that was not a very good solder at all. It's okay, tip of my soldering iron just fell off, which is not good because I've already done that once and burnt the carpet. So I'm going to unsolder that. Okay. And I'm going to insert that wire through the little groove up the top. Make a soldered joint. Nicely done. Now we'll get the other wire. And they're both now soldered to the point motor. Okay. Move the large black wire out. Bend round the short wire. Feed that up to the next terminal. Probably going to have to hold that one in place. Excuse the motor jumping about. A bit of solder. Just lifting the wire lightly. There we go, that's done. And there we have two wires neatly joined. Now I can add a bit more flux to these two and hopefully solder those. Yep, so there we are. Now this black wire here will go to feed, negative feed, on the switch panel and the loop is designed to give feed to both poles. This is what makes your pin go back and forth like this. So that's how I colour code it. Right then. Next, the red wire. So, same as before, I'll let you see this lot this time. Bit of flux up on the end there. Feed that through. Bring the solder down. Light dab. And that's done. And then the green wire. And hey presto. 
so move those out of the way now turn off the solder line move the solder and there you have your PL10 wired now the green and the red wires these go to the switch on the control panel and the control panel will also have a positive feed on the center terminal so when you flick the switch you'll get power going either through the red or to the green and that in turn will throw the motor turn into the motor itself now as you can see if we turn that way you can see you've got these tabs one two three four five six now these two tabs are mainly only used for engage when you're pitching them to the points and uh, we don't need them we're just worried about these main four now you can bend these over and down if you like but what i tend to do is take them right off and let's just take a pair of pliers there just wiggle back and forth and then that tab comes off turn it around move the pin a couple of times there we go and we're done so now we need to fit our motor to our point just going to make sure the points are okay they throw all right and as you can see you've got the holes one two three four and that's for the tabs one two three four which will sit underneath and then the pin will go through the center hole of the tie bar so then this is where you need to be pretty ambidextrous I tend to wiggle it like that hold the pin come down a bit and just manipulate tog through Turn it over and just lifting. I'm looking to see where the pin is. It's twisted slightly. So move the pin, lift it up. Nothing goes to plan when you want it to, does it? There we are. Just see the pin hole, hopefully. Yep, and there we have it. So, using my trusty cocktail stick, there we have the pin through, and then we have the four lugs on the other side. And all we need to do is just bend those over. I just tend to push them over and squeeze with a pair of pliers just to lock them into place. Over. Lock it down. And the last one. And there we have it. So there we have our motor installed and uh, ready to go to insert it into the baseball. It will slot in like that. Then we'll connect, drop the wires through, connect them up, and then hopefully we should have a working point. 
Ta da! Right then. So, time to carry on. I've had a good look around the board um, to see I'm not missing anything. And good job I did. I found four sets of points which have not been motorized. So, we have the initial culprit, which was the Y point. He's done, ready to go. That's from the bay platform. He's sorted. We've got that one to sort out. And this one as well. And two more motors to wire up. So I won't bore you with this lot. I'll just let you sit back and relax. And there we have it. Four sets of points. All being wired up. Ready to go back onto the layout. Now that will be the next bit to show you, fitting them and dropping them into place. And uh, hopefully we can then start to do some ballasting. I hope I've uh, made this a bit interesting for you. I don't mean to make you suck eggs, so to speak, and I'm not trying to be better than anybody else. Um, I know there are lots of other video channels out there who also have layouts and are showing you how to wire in things. We all do it differently. Um, I just hope you've learned something and it's been a beneficial for you. Okay, see you again later. Bye.